originally said three people. However, uh, Alana and Sapphire Jewel ASMR kind of kept uh, going back and forth, so I decided to do a fourth one for uh, Sapphire, who seemed rather excited about getting a reading. I'm just gonna keep it simple. It's just gonna be a three card pull um, for each reading that I do. And if the three that I pull um, are a little confusing or don't really tell the whole story, I'll pull another card. Um, but I tend to stick with just the basic, um, you know, three card spread. First reading is going to be for Zero. He's been following my channel, I think, almost the entire time, or at least pretty close to it. Um, and his question is, how can I better myself and keep motivated in everyday life? It's a pretty open-ended question, so um, I'm just going to see what the cards have to say and see how it links back. I did have one card out already. It's the Knight of Wands in the upright position. And I will share with everyone um, what it is that each of these cards mean. I like to take a moment to look at the cards. See, sometimes they like to jump out at me. Uh, we have the Six of Wands. Got a lot of uh, wands so far. Sometimes the cards literally pop out at me and I'll say, okay, that's what I was meant to read. Or um, if nothing does, I cut the deck in half and pull a card that way. Um, Six of Swords were first. Okay. Let me take a moment and see. I set it up on my computer so that I could easily find. starting something new, uh, maybe using, maybe using your creative side on a project, or, um, this could even be indicative of, um, maybe like starting a new hobby or something that you think that, um, you could really get into. In general, wands are all about ambition, drive, inspiration, and sometimes that means figuring out what inspires you or um, just kind of being mindful of, you know, what 
what's going on in the present. What, what can I relate to in the present time? So, the Six of Wands is all about victory, glory, success, recognition, and good news. Six of Swords is somewhat the opposite of the um, uh, actually I'm going to back up the, the sword, Swords cards in general are way more about logic and reasoning and being strategic um, it can relate back to things like mental health or rational decision making. It's very much um, about the mind. It's very much about um, having the logical side. From what I'm getting from this reading, the logical side and the rational side, sorry, the logical side and the creative, more emotional side need to come together and essentially work to give you a balance in day-to-day -day life because if you have too much of one and not enough of the other, you know, it's, it's this swinging pendulum that leads to a lot of uncertainty and that is gonna, that's actually a theme throughout tarot cards quite a bit is balance and finding out what helps you to keep balance in your life. Now, I do remember this may have been a while ago, Zero, I do believe that you mentioned um, that you have ADHD. So <laughs> I know that it can be sort of difficult um, because you had mentioned an issue with uh, hyperfixation and um, <laughs> so like you could have all of these things right, but they could seem rather rather fleeting. <laughs> So that is going to be the challenge for you, I believe, is uh, something that can motivate you one day, may not motivate you the next day. So I think that being said, you might want to take a look at potentially a hobby that is going to continue to introduce new topics to you. Um, you know, if, if you were to learn a new instrument, maybe, you know, take some time to try out different genres, you know, playing that instrument. Um, and I gotta say, motivation specifically is difficult. It is so incredibly difficult. Um, what I would suggest doing as far as finding out what motivates you is when you wake up in the morning, and this is more the, the rational side, you know, wake up and say, what did I think about when I woke up? Or what thing am I excited to do today? Even if it's something incredibly small. It could be, it could be drawing, it could be um, talking to a friend, it could be literally anything. It could be you bought some new paper towels at the store and you're excited to use them. <laughs> I mean, just start off small and see if you find themes. I find that it's the more creative things that I get excited about or I really like the idea of thinking through a difficult puzzle or something like that because <laughs> unfortunately the, the motivation thing day to day it may it may look like the night of the night of wands one day where you're on a horse and you're you're galloping and you're saving the 
this and just apply it to everyday life. Uh, the Six of Swords in particular, this last card that I pulled for you, I did pull it in reverse. And so some of the themes, some of the generic themes uh, with this, this um, card is uh, feeling stuck in the past, returning to trouble, um, running away from problems, or just feeling trapped in general. And it can, it can be pretty hard to feel motivated if you're also feeling trapped in a job or a circumstance, or um, you may be in school. I purposely didn't ask for a lot of details about the people that asked for readings. Um, simply because I wanted to see what the card said and if it resonated with anybody. Um, but there's a sort of feeling of avoidance and I'm not sure how else to phrase it, but um, avoidance is a theme with this card in reverse. be mindful, um, be in the moment, and notice maybe when something uncomfortable comes up and notice when good things are happening and you're excited and you're feeling great. Take note of the both of them so that you can balance it out. Um, and I feel like if you can apply that to different parts of your life, it's going to be a more rounded experience for you. Also, with everybody, I hope that I answer your questions. I may be way off base. Um, I definitely am no expert when it comes to tarot reading, um, but I like to give these readings as a chance to just, you know, reflect on a topic, get you thinking. Um, maybe I'll answer some questions, maybe I won't, but I definitely do not claim to tell the future or, you know, like, don't take my word as gospel, like, for sure. The next reading I'm going to do is for Audet ASMR, and I am going to um, tag everybody and do timestamps for when each person's um, uh, reading is up so that if anybody wants to jump straight to their reading, then they are more than welcome to do so. But yes, Audet ASMR's topic is improving self-confidence. And for the sake of this reading, I'm going to sort of self-confidence and self-love. I feel like it is a lot easier to be confident. It is a lot easier to show people that confidence. Um, when you find you have aspects of yourself to be confident in. So for the purposes of how I'm going to do this reading and how I'm going to look it all up, um, that's the sort of angle that I am going to go with. I've also just been kind of sprinkling in my own personal opinion, slash if I happen to know anything about anyone.
card is the world uh, in reverse. Now, it's interesting. Uh, Zero had all minor arcana cards, and it looks like Audette has all major arcana. So, let me pull up Judgment. ourselves every day. We are our harshest critics. We we find all the little things to not like about ourselves. But in the grand scheme of things, like what are what are the things that other people are gonna take away like from knowing you? What what would they say the best part of Audet ASMR is? So this next card is the Empress. The Empress. So in the upright position, this card is all about uh, divine feminine energy, nurturing, uh, creative uh, energies, beauty, abundance nature. It's a very warm and welcoming card. Um, so, in the terms of self-love, it's all about nurturing and it's all about um, giving and generosity which doesn't necessarily seem like it connects at first, but when you think about it, learning to be more self-confident also involves sitting with yourself and talking yourself up. Like if nobody else has given you a pep talk today, then you give yourself one. Um, although I'm sure you probably have um, some sort of support group, your friends, family, um, other people through your channel that are always there for you, but 
self-confidence is different because you can accept compliments from so many people, but self-confidence, you have to dig down deep and admit to yourself what parts you like about yourself, which shouldn't be as hard to do as it seems to be sometimes. And I think that because of the fact that we are our harshest critics, it's so easy to get bogged down in what we don't like and being mean to ourselves. And, you know, like we are our own bullies at times. We don't even need other people to be mean to us because we're mean to ourselves. And I really think that the Empress in the upright position is encouraging you to be okay with, you know, gassing yourself up and saying, you know, I'm a nice person, I'm a generous person, I am intelligent, I am, you know, because, like, to act self-confident, I mean, I suppose you could just fake it, but if you're trying to genuinely improve, feeling confident in yourself and not just how you're projecting it to others, then you have to be your <laughs> biggest cheerleader. You have to nurture yourself and you have to know what parts of you, back to analyzing, you know, reflecting on yourself, you need to look at the areas that need it most. Um, if you're, uh, maybe, uh, you don't like the way you look or you know, something of a physical nature, like, then it's time to sit in front of a mirror <laughs> and tell yourself how beautiful you are. You have to nurture uh, your own mind and your own thoughts about yourself. Okay, and the last card is the world, and it is in the uh, reversed position. a sense of there's something missing or maybe you're taking something for granted um, if we were to sort of take this back to the uh, the thought of like loving yourself and all of that when you stop and think about it human bodies are kind of amazing the things that we do the things that we can do because of our bodies, our minds, our hearts, like, it's incredibly easy to take certain things for granted, right? We take breathing for granted until our nose gets stuffy, and <laughs> I think that people do that with themselves, like, as a quick example, in English and the second one is more so a focus on uh, creative writing and I have been working on a novel that started off as my thesis for that program and I'll tell people about it and say yeah but I haven't finished it it's still a lot more than you know what other people have done like not many people would even start that process in the first place and so it's super easy to take for granted the knowledge I have of the English language, of grammar, of, you know, anything that came along with that degree. But then I sit back and think about it and I'm like, no, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> so I'm going to take a step back and readdress improving self-confidence. So. What's interesting about these three cards is many times when you have, um, you know, like you have a person's face on the card or one that you can readily see, typically they're looking, you know, 
one way or another. Sometimes it makes them interact because they're like looking at each other or something like that. But you have Judgment and the Empress that are both looking dead on at you and saying, you've got to dig deep. You've got to really evaluate what it is you like, what it is you don't like, and then realize the stuff you don't like probably doesn't even matter. <laughs> um, so I feel like, you know, these two cards here, <laughs> they're being very direct. They are, you know, they are saying, and what I love with the Empress is, uh, if you can see, she has a crown. She's sitting on a throne. card is like the embodiment of yes queen yes <laughs> um, honestly like it's great to have outside support and i think that's necessary for everybody but learning how to be your own support system your own you know working on self-sufficiency being this empress like that that i think is going to be your biggest advantage to improving your self-esteem and your self-confidence because only part of it is the act of it and I just feel really drawn to talking about not being so hard on yourself um, we do that enough already it's time to you know get out the trumpet it's time to celebrate you it's time to make a statue in your name and just talk about how awesome you are and it's so easy for us to forget this it's so easy for us to not do so that is my advice to you like really embracing yourself who you are right now in this moment the good the bad the ugly the silly the goofy the the, uh, the outrageous just put it all out there and it does take some work it takes some practice just like any other skill but I am confident that once you really open up your eyes to yourself and if you're stuck I would suggest asking some friends and saying hey I need help starting this I need help knowing where to begin what are some things about me that you wish I knew about myself. What are some things that you wish I saw in me that you see in me? Um, but honestly, once you get going, I think you're going to have a pretty easy time with it.
whether something is upright or reversed. Um, it's just more so about like what direction you take with whatever the card stands for. So like one's not better than the other. Upright versus reversed. and your career. Um, it's saying that it's about money mismanagement or someone that you work with or wish to work with not being the best partner. Now, when it comes to your health, this card is all about treating your body like a temple and, you know, think about thinking about what's going into your body and how that you may have. On, on another note, this card being in the reverse position can also hit on the fact that you take so much time to care for others that you're not taking proper time to care for yourself, which anybody who's experienced burnout can tell you it takes a toll on every aspect of your life. The third card is the Devil card. So, because this is in the upright position, some of the generic meanings are more oppression, addiction, obsession or codependency, uh, feeling powerless or feeling like you have limitations. So when it comes to career, this job is saying that you, um, you know, you may feel like you're stuck somewhere or like you're stuck in a job that you don't like. Um, maybe the job itself isn't, isn't, um, very good for your health. Um, it could be causing you way more stress than what's necessary. Um, I'm 
starting to get the feeling that you feel like you can't excel in one area without the other one suffering. Um, if we go back to this Two of Swords, you know, you feel like there's not really a good choice to be made. And I'm, I'm sort of getting the vibe that you might be dependent on somebody or a job or something that you don't want to be. Um, and when I say dependent on something, it could be a way of thinking. It could be um, certain thought processes. Um, there is a cycle of blaming others and self-sabotage that could be connected with the devil card. Um, I obviously didn't get many details about what was going on for you in your job. But, um, I think it's fair to say that with, with most jobs, unless you're doing something that you love and would never trade for anything, you know, you, you can have some, some feelings about it and <clears throat> I'm trying really hard to not make assumptions based on what I've gone through, but I felt like for a while I was going to have to take a job that was either bad for my health, was going to exacerbate um, any pain that I had, or I could take a job that didn't pay me what I was worth in order to have a sitting desk job, in order to um, do something that wouldn't impact my health negatively. And, who knows, some people have followed my channel simply because I, you know, told them I'm a spoonie and, you know, that sort of stuff affects me all the time. But there is one more card, so I want to take a look, and that last card is the Ten of Cups in the upright position.
actually, whether it be maybe they can help you um, if you don't have the energy to cook after you come home from work, you know, maybe they can help out in that area or um, I've had friends help me out with washing dishes uh, because that's a chore I hate to do <laughs> with a passion. Um, but that was their way of helping me with balancing out the fact that I have to work, I have to support myself. But then I come home and I'm just exhausted and I don't have the energy to fulfill my responsibilities. But I feel like this may be an answer card. Like your, your family, your support system, your friends are going to be key in helping you with, um, with the issues that you're seeing with your health and with your career. Now, I'm just sort of assuming that they are connected because of the way that you ask the question. Um, I mean, they definitely tie in. Uh, it ties into every part of your life, right? Uh, having good health just sets you up in the rest of your life. So, the longer I look at these cards, there is something that is causing you to get in the way of yourself. It is causing you to either not take the necessary steps in order to improve your health or um, maybe, maybe there is some sort of thought process that is trapping you in the job that you have now. Um, because the, the Queen of Pentacles reversed and the Devil, while they're not the best cards ever, they are kind of negative, so it seems like there may be some sort of roadblock that only you're gonna know, you know, how to get over, or, or, I mean, I will tell people till I'm blue in the face, uh, that you can have a mental health counselor for any kind of reason. It doesn't have to be some crazy crisis. Or if it is, they're really good with that too. But, um, you know, just having that support system in place. And I'm sorry, I don't have a more concrete answer on that. But it definitely seems like your support system is going to be key to you, um, getting over this obstacle that you find yourself in. Um, and it may even be in a way that's completely surprising to you. Um, so I would just keep myself open to that. I would keep myself open to um, potentially saying, hey, I could be doing this better or I could be doing that better. And just kind of like taking a look at what you're doing right now and how you feel because of it. I might also suggest, um, as far as your health, tracking your symptoms. Um, if you find you'd only have these symptoms on days that you don't work, that's that's a big piece of information that can tell you, you know, where to go next. Um, I know way too much about, about all of that. Um, and anybody who got a reading, if they want to ask follow-up questions, I'm more than happy to chat. Um, I don't know that I'm going to have super specific advice for you. Um, but, you know, I'm hoping that these readings help in some regard. And then we have our final reading for today. And that is going to be for Sapphire Jewel ASMR. centered around her professional future, um, her career, and I could have sworn I saw something somewhere about being independent, but when I went to go look for the comment again, I couldn't find it, um, so I'm just gonna have that kind of in the back of my mind. Um, to tell you exactly what 
the Seven of Pentacles upright. So, with this card in reverse, there is a, a lot of conflict surrounding money, um, or even the feeling that you've been taken advantage of. Um, when it comes to money, that can, that can happen in so many forms. Um, the, the obvious one being like a scam or if somebody were to like hack into your account and steal your money or something like that. Um, but it can extend far beyond that. And I know this first card is encouraging you to, um, to push through, to keep going, to keep saving. But I don't feel like I quite... Um, I'm not sure if you're currently working or not, but if you are, I'm wondering if there's somebody at work who in 
circumstances about your work is intimidating to you. Um, something that might make you feel like independence is going to be hard to come by. But of course, like you've got a king sitting on his throne and, you know, he's wearing his ornate robes and all of that. One of the things that can be taken from this card is mentorship. So I'm wondering if there isn't somebody that you can go to, um, you know, if you're having concerns about finances or if. Maybe, maybe you want to get a certain type of job, but you're not sure um, how to go about it. And I feel like, I feel like you need to seek out somebody else, somebody older than you, somebody with experience um, to guide you through some of this. Um... situations where, you know, you don't know what you don't know. So sometimes you don't know uh, what questions to ask or where to go next. And um, it just seems like whether it be an advisor or um, if there's a way to find out information about a field that you're interested in going into. Um, I do think that the more that you're not afraid to reach out to others, ask these questions, get advice, um, I think that uh, networking might be a good idea for um, for you as far as getting some insider knowledge or, um, you know, being able to look at, you know, what you've done so far and kind of put things in perspective for you here. So... The, the Five of Cups, if you can see it, the person is looking at the cups that fell or broke, even though he has two right here that are still standing and they're still holding liquid. And this card uh, encourages us to look at the, the big picture. Now, there were times where I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with my time. And so I went and took aptitude quizzes. I, um, you know, I took every questionnaire out there to see what type of industry I should go into for work. And a lot of them kind of uh, came back to things like being a therapist, social worker, which is what I am now. And so, like, I think getting outsider's perspective and getting the big picture of yourself is going to really, um, really show you, you know, what it is you need to be doing with, with your time and your effort. And I think 
by doing this and then making a plan and just moving forward. You're, you are going to uh, meet your financial goals, um, whether it's a lifestyle thing and you want to be able to live on your own or, um, you know, just have enough money to not feel like you're living paycheck to paycheck. Um, my ultimate advice for you, um, I mean, you can even, this could even be if you talk to family members and say, what do you see me doing? Or, uh, you know, where do you think I should take, you know, this current job that I'm in? What should I do about it? Or, you know, should I go to school? These are all things that, um, you're going to have to take into consideration. And I'm sorry, I don't have a more concrete answer because I'd love to just be able to pull it out of my hat and say, um, here's what you're going to do with your life. But I get the feeling that you may even wind up having to dry out a few things before you find what you really like. Um, I kind of did that in a roundabout way for myself. Um, you don't have to have everything figured out right this minute. Um, but it doesn't hurt to get advice. It doesn't hurt to get outside thoughts. Um, <laughs> I've always laughed because, you know, in grade school, we had to follow all these rules. We had to ask for permission to go use the bathroom. We had to do all this stuff. But... As soon as we turn 18, we go off to college and have to decide what we're going to do with our life for the next 50 years. And it's just kind of crazy. And it's a lot of pressure. Um, don't be afraid to take some time to think about it. Um, don't be afraid to, if you need to, just take some time to work whatever job and just save up some money until you have a clearer idea of what it is you want to do. That's a perfectly valid option. Totally valid. Um, I hope that this answers your question. And again, you're more than 